there are a number of strategies being looked at to control carp and, and the one that uh, I'm focusing on is the use of a virus uh, called Cyprinid herpes virus 3, sometimes called Koi herpes virus, um, as a potential biological control agent for the, for the uh, fish. The virus has been known for uh, since, since the late 90s around the world. It's not present in Australia at present, nor in New Zealand. Um, where it does occur around the world, it causes massive devastation in carp populations. Some people claim 100% mortality in some populations. We've done some work in the uh, high security facility down in Geelong with this virus. Um, and it certainly kills Australian carp, so there's, uh, there's no problem with the virus in, in that regard. Carp are certainly listed by the um, International Union for the Conservation of Nature as one of the most invasive of all fish species. Um, opinion polls taken in Australia of uh, public opinion con constantly indicate that carp are regarded up right up there with uh, cats and rabbits um, and toads as a major uh, invasive species. So, well, we haven't actually finally decided on how the virus will be released um, in a strategic manner. It, technically, uh, we'll probably release it by infecting a number of fish and releasing them into a carp population and let the fish spread the virus. The virus um, we know will cause high mortality. In order to take full advantage of the virus, we're probably going to need to have some sort of complementary broad scale control mechanism uh, to work with it, um, to take full advantage of the virus. For a, a long time, we thought uh, that complementary approach might be so-called daughterless carp uh, technology. Um, whether that occurs or not, we're not sure now, but uh, if the daughterless carp's not available, then we'll be relying on modelling approaches to help us determine the best way to take, to make optimal use of our virus. People do worry about the potential effect on humans. Um, We've got a number of lines of evidence that suggest that, that there's no basis for that belief. For example, um, we've, we've actually uh, put the virus into mice, which are a mammal like us, like humans, and we've found absolutely no evidence for disease or for multiplication of the virus. Um, another piece of evidence is that this virus has been causing devastation in many carp farms all around the world and there's never been any evidence that people who work on those farms have had any sort of disease associated with the virus. We've got a, a couple of viruses in Australia that are quite closely related to the carp virus um, and they've been here for a long time never has there been any evidence that uh, they're associated with disease in humans either. And the last piece of evidence is uh, uh, provided by um, people in Europe. There was a, a report written for the European Commission at the turn of the century, year 2000, in which they stated that no fish virus has ever been shown to cause disease in a human. So we think that uh, the combination of all those pieces of information are sufficient to allay any doubt about causing problems in humans. In terms of other species where we're concerned, of course, that the virus doesn't cause any problems in native fish, um, in amphibians, reptiles, other mammals uh, that might share the water with infected carp. And we've done uh, a lot of work over the last five to six years uh, looking at the susceptibility, particularly of fish 
and found absolutely no evidence of disease or indeed of uh, the virus multiplying in uh, 13 native fish species. Um, no evidence of it uh, causing problems in chickens representing birds or mice representing mammals. Um, and we're currently looking at the uh, the effect of the virus on amphibians and reptiles and at this stage we're about halfway through the experiment and there's been absolutely no indication so far of the virus causing any problems.